Hi, welcome to the Seventh Electronic Laboratories. We'll be talking about the bipolar junction transistor. There are four experiments in this lab. Experiment one. We'll give you two BJT, and you have to determine the type and the pin. Also, verify your results with the prelab. After you determine the type, use your multimeter to measure and record the beta. Then you have to heat the BJT with your hands for a while. This will le let you understand that the temperature will affect the beta. So measure and record the data with the multimeter. Experiment 2 we want you to see the characteristic curve of the bipolar junction transistor. Complete the circuit and input VCC with a sine wave of fre frequency 500 Hz and peak to peak voltage of 10 volt with an offset of 5 volt. Connect channel 1 to this point and channel 2 to this point and ground to this point and use the XY mode to record the IV curve. Note that the RB is 100 kilo ohm and you have to adjust the VBB such that the IB equals to 0, 10, 20, 30 and 40 microampere. Plot each IV curve graph of this these conditions. Here is a slight review of how to use the XY mode. In the previous method, we have to invert the channel 2 waveform, but not here. Because in the previous lab, the both signals are inverted. But in this lab, the channel 1 and channel 2 has the same sign, so they don't have to invert. This is the result of setting different IB 0, 10, 20, 30, and 40 microampere. Note the graduation here, and you can convert this graph into the IV relation using these formula. Experiment 3. Download the IV curve graph from EE Lab official website and record every coordinate and step unit. This is the graph of the curve tracer. The graduation of the y axis is here, and the graduation of the x axis is here. So you can estimate how large is the saturation region of the BJT with the graduation. Experiment 4. Complete the circuit here with this sine wave of 500 Hz with peak voltage of 0 0.02 volt and with an offset of 1 volt. Set the RB to 100 kilo ohm and RC to 1 kilo ohm. Measure the following values and see that where does the source of DC and AC signals are. Basically, in this circuit configuration, the capacitor has infinite resistance towards the DC signal. Therefore, it stops the DC signal from here. But for AC signal, the capacitor has zero resistance, so the AC signal could generate from here. 
but DC cannot go through. So the DC component of VB comes from other part of the circuit. For the second part of this experiment, we have three configurations. Use RB with 2 mega ohm and RC with 1 kilo ohm. Then use the value that you've designed in Prelab 5. We hope that your steady voltage of VCE equals to 5 volt. Therefore, if you cannot achieve this, adjust the RB value. Observe and record the VN and VC signals for these different configurations. That's all for this lab. Good luck.